All right, it's been over a year since I made a video about this and it's time for a refresh. There's been a lot of changes in my life and the biggest of which is I am now doing this content creation thing full time. Yeah. Another big change is my new IQ Nix F97 that I upgraded from the F96. Now on the outside, these two look exactly the same, but this one's actually got some major upgrades. Before we dive into it, I want you guys to know that this video is not sponsored by IQ Nix. I actually bought the F97 with my own money because I was just such a big fan of the F96 that I bought about two years ago. However, IQ Nix did send me a discount code to share with my audience. In case you guys are in the market for a new keyboard, just click in the link in the descriptions and use the code BEVLISH to receive a 5% discount, which is pretty nice. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's uh, talk about this guy. So the model I have here is the F97 Hitchhiker Edition, which has an off-white greenish base color with some really cool space theme keycaps in blue, gray, and orange accents, which I absolutely love because I love anything that has to do with space. And the colors on this keyboard is much more subdued than all the other keyboards I have from iQnix. But if you do prefer the brighter colors like this Coral C variant that's on my F96, the good news is that they do still offer this color option for the F97 lineup along with a bunch of other really cool styles. So yeah, just take a look on their website. Um, some other features that carried over from the previous model is the same aerospace grade aluminum chassis that gives these keyboards that same really heavy premium feel. Now, despite the 97 in its name, this is still a 96% layout keyboard, which has actually become my favorite layout because now that I'm doing this thing full time, I am doing a lot more accounting work. So I really appreciate having the full number pad in this more compact form factor, but that is pretty much where the similarities end. Now, one of the first differences I noticed in this keyboard are these KDA profile keycaps, which have a lower profile than the OEM style on the F96. And they also have large rounded corners that I think looks a lot better. But besides just aesthetics, the lower profile and the deeper scoop in the middle actually feels really good when I type because it guides my fingers to the middle as I move around. So these keycaps are super comfortable to type on. Now they are still made from PBT, which is one of the most durable and best quality plastics that you can get for keycaps. And I'm really not exaggerating when I say I think these are gonna last you for years because I've used the F96 for almost two years and the F97 for about nine months. And if you take a look at the keys, they still look as fresh as the day I got them. Now I did notice while I was browsing their website, the KDA profile is only available on the Hitchhiker, Graffiti Diary, Camping, and Winter Tide models. And the other ones all come with Cherry Profile keycaps, which are just shorter versions of these OEM ones on the F96. Also, both the Variable X and Typing Lab keyboards, they use ABS keycaps. I'm guessing probably due to the printing process in order to get those much brighter colors. Um, so just be sure to check their website before you make a purchase. I only have these two keyboards to compare, so I don't really know much about the other models. Anyway, another big update with the F97 is that these switches are now hot swappable, which means if you ever need to replace a switch, all you need to do is use the included tools to pull out the old ones and then just uh, press a new one in, which is much easier than on the F96 that requires soldering. And you know, this is a pretty big deal for anyone who wants to just try out different types of switches or if we ever need to replace a switch that was malfunctioning. And speaking of switches, they do offer both Cherry and TTC switches for the F97 models, whereas on the F96, they only offer Cherry options. Yeah, as far as external changes go, those are the only ones I'm aware of. And I currently have cherry browns in both of these keyboards. So I am definitely going to include a comparison at the end of the video to see if there's a difference in the way they sound with just those upgrades. And I'll have timestamps below if you just wanna to skip to that, but for now, let's uh, go ahead and talk about the internal changes. So if you saw my previous video on the F96 and the 80 series keyboards, you know that I was a big fan of how seamless it was to switch between my Windows laptop, my MacBook Pro, and the iPad. And I also mentioned that the F96 only connected via Bluetooth 4.0. Well, now they've upgraded that to Bluetooth 5.1, which means a higher speed, increased range, and a lower power consumption. And on top of that, they've also added the 2.0 4 gigahertz wireless connection using the dongle just like they did on the 80 series. So now you'll be able to get that one millisecond response time if you choose to use this for video games. And of course the wired connection through USB-C is still available. So I only use Bluetooth, which I haven't had any issues with on either of these models. But if I had to make one complaint, it would be that the Bluetooth goes to sleep if I haven't used the keyboard for a while and then it takes two or three seconds for it to wake back up and reconnect. It's really not that big of a deal, but if that 
that is something that bothers you, just know that the wired connection and the 2.4 gigahertz wireless connections, they're both instant. Also, the F97 is still compatible with both Windows and Mac, and you can swap between the two by using the hotkeys. Now, previously, I did complain that my F96 didn't come with keycaps for the Mac layout, and at the time, I wasn't sure if it was true for all F96s or if it was just mine that was missing, but I am happy to report that the F97s do come with the extra keycaps for the Mac layout, which is great for those of us who only use Mac devices. Now, another major upgrade on the F97 is the battery life, and when I say major, I mean huge. I'm not sure what they did, but somehow they managed to increase the battery life from 20 days to 260 days while keeping that same 4,000 milliamp hour battery. Now, I'm not sure how accurate those numbers are, but I really did notice a significant increase. And <laughs> the reason how I noticed it was actually because of this mouse. And this is the Logitech MX Master 3, which has an advertised battery life of 70 days. So what I noticed was that the only time I remember to charge my keyboard was when I got a 0% battery notification for this mouse. And even then, this keyboard will still have about 60% battery left. Um, but usually what I do is after I charge the mouse, I'll just take the cable and plug into the keyboard. So I never really measured how long it took to completely drain the battery from this guy. I just know that it roughly doubles the battery life of the mouse. But on the other hand, the F96 always required to be charged two or three times before I had to charge the mouse. So there's definitely a huge difference between these two. Um, but like I said in my review for the F96, battery life really isn't that big of a deal for me since I always have a USB-C cable nearby for charging. But regardless, I applaud IQ Unix for making this huge improvement. Okay, as I promised before I give you guys my final take, here is a sound comparison between these two keyboards. I think the F97 sounds really good. I don't know if it's due to the different keycaps or if they did something on the installation, but yeah, this one definitely sounds a lot less hollow than this. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. But should you get an F97? Well, if you're someone who already loves the F96 and are in the market to get a new keyboard, then yeah, I strongly suggest that you consider this one because they really made a lot of improvements over the first gen. Um, and if you're someone who's looking to get into your first mechanical keyboard, then I understand that $245 does seem really expensive, but really as you start diving into this world of mechanical keyboards, you're gonna realize that that price is really not that high. Um, now I can't speak on how this would compare to a fully customized keyboard since I've never made one, but on the landscape of pre-made mechanical keyboards that you can buy right now, I think this one definitely leads the pack in terms of quality and design. So you're gonna spend this money once and it's gonna last you a really long time. Now, if the 96% layout is too large, then uh, check out the 80 series keyboards, which are a lot smaller because they don't have the number pad, but still have the same connectivity options as the F97. And not to mention just how awesome these look. Oh, and if you or anyone you know are cat lovers, Check this one out. This is the M80 Perry Cat Keyboard with some really cool cat theme keycaps on it and they have blue switches. So I think the intent here is to mimic the sound of nails clicking on the floor when you type. I'm not sure how well you guys hear it, but it's actually really satisfying. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to show you guys some of these options available, and they have even smaller keyboards on their website, you know, if that's your thing. But anyway, remember that you can get 5% off any of these keyboards by clicking on the link in the descriptions and using the code BEVLISH at checkout. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, and if you want to see my review on these 80 series keyboards, be sure to check out this video here, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys in the next one.